processing your payroll is done through Payroll Data Entry, which is located under Payroll, under the main folder, in Payroll Data Entry. Now the first question that you're asked is, what is your pay cycle? In employee maintenance, all of your employees are defined to a pay cycle. So under my drop-down, if I was doing a weekly payroll, I would select that, and then I can auto-pay all of my weekly employees. So I'm going to go ahead and select weekly as my option. Period ending date. This date is not your check date, however, it's the actual pay period end. So maybe your pay period ended on May 30th, but your actual pay date is June 2nd. So again, this has to be the period end date um, that you are looking at, not your actual check date. So I'm actually going to change mine. I'll say that my period end date was May 10th, and maybe my check date that I'm going to process is going to be on May 15th. Your deduction period. If you recall in your deduction setups, you define based on deductions what period will that deduction happen. So if this is May 10th, maybe that's my second pay week of the month, I would say that I'm dealing with pay deduction period two. How many days are worked? Well, if this is weekly, I can set this as five, as one week. If it was bi-weekly, I would set it to 10 and two. What is the standard earnings code? I'm going to leave that as my default of regular, so that way it's the initial default for any entry that I'm going to do. Now over on the right hand side you have a tabs button. Now the tab setting just lets you know that the tax code, department field, labor code, if I check those boxes for data entry purposes, I would actually have them as a tab setting while I am using my enter key. I also can auto pay my employees. So if I go into the auto pay option, I can now do further selections. I could select based on labor code. Maybe I only want my hourly employees for this selection. Maybe I only want a specific range of employees. So if I wanted to auto pay, which would simply bring in all of my employees for this payroll, I could do this function with the auto pay option. You also have default settings on your pay cycle. Will we be entering manual taxes? Again, this can be overridden as we're doing our entries. Do we want to take auto deductions? So if I have any employees who have an automatic deduction assigned to their record, such as health insurance, 401k, this will allow me to just populate all of those auto, de auto deductions automatically. Do I need to print my checks? You normally would not print your checks if maybe we were entering a manual check, which we will review. And am I also going to be dealing with direct deposit entries? So I'm going to say OK to this particular pay cycle. Now because I did not auto pay any employees, I currently have no employees selected. So I can manually select my employees. If I had done an auto pay in my listing, I would see a listing of all the employees that were pulled into this file. Since they're not, I'm going to do a lookup under my employee number, and I'm going to go ahead and pay Alan Jenkins. Now it defaults to entry number one, so this means I'm going to have one check for Alan Jenkins. If by chance I also needed to give a separate check to Alan Jenkins, maybe for a bonus payment, I would enter maybe entry number two. So you can have multiple checks per employee per entry. So the standard default is going to be one. If I complete this entry and need to pay him a second check, I will accept it and I will come in and bring him back up and do pay entry number two and so forth. So for pay entry number one, under my header, it's defaulting from my pay cycle settings, days work, weeks worked. Do I need to print this check? Do I want to take auto deductions? So if I was doing a standard payroll, I would leave all of those default settings because I do want to print him a check unless he has direct deposit, and I do want it to take auto deductions. So then I can go over to my lines tab. Now it's immediately defaulting earnings codes one. It is pulling in the state information, department and labor code information based on Allen's settings. I can also define a workers comp code. This is again pulling from my employee maintenance. It's defining his rate as well as the standard hours and what that rate would be. If I needed to change these hours, I can easily modify my 40 hours. Maybe I want them to be 32 hours. Maybe Alan took a week's vacation, so I want to put eight hours against my vacation earnings code. So I can change that to 32 hours, 
and say OK. Now what I can do is give him eight hours of vacation time. So again, it's an earning. And if I do a lookup under my code, I can easily see my vacation pay. In my vacation pay, it's still pulling in his standard rate, and I'm going to pay him eight hours of vacation. So the net result is the same for his 40 hours, but it allowed me to do a split in regards to his regular time with vacation time. If my entry was complete, I can say accept. Now because our settings in payroll options are turned on to allow us to take automatic deductions, I'm going to say yes here. What this is going to do for me is it's going to take a look at Alan's employee maintenance record to see if he has any predefined automatic deductions. And he does because we do see that it brought in a credit union deduction of $50. And it also brought in a 401k plan deduction. So again, I don't need to go to his record to manually select these. I don't need to manually add them. It's best to just set them to auto deduct whenever possible so it will automatically populate on their record. If I needed to remove this or change this, by changing it, clicking on the record allows me to come up to the top and make those changes. If by chance this particular payroll was requested where the credit union deduction was not to come out, we could simply delete this line by using the delete function in the lower left corner. If I made the mistake and I needed to bring it back, I could simply say OK to this deduction which clears the top section and now I can go ahead and re-enter that deduction if I needed to. I can accept this record and now I can go on to the next employee's record. If I entered a, numerous employees and realize that I made a mistake and I want to clear the entire payroll entry, I can go back to my pay cycle and I can hit the clear button. So anytime you have payroll entries that maybe you had predefined with the wrong periods or predefined information that was incorrect, you can easily clear all of those transactions. But I'm going to cancel out of that. And let's just assume that this was our only record that we needed to pay this week was this one employee. So I'm going to close the window. And now I'm going to generate my payroll tax calculation. You cannot move forward to any of the other registers under the payroll main folder unless you run your payroll tax calculation. Even if you do a manual check entry, you still have to run payroll tax calculation. That function needs to be performed in order for you to get your data entry audit report. So when the payroll tax calculation comes up, we're going to tell it to proceed. And so now it's going through all of our records and performing the tax calculations based on what is set up in our tax maintenance. It's asking me if I want to print my data entry audit report. So yes, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I have a few different options. Do I want to see all the earnings data, deductions data? Do I want to separate it by page, by employee? Maybe I only want to look at a certain employee. I'm going to go ahead and preview my audit report. Now in my audit report, it's going to define all of my entries. So keep in mind, we have not updated or posted anything yet. We are still in the data entry process. So I can now review my information. I can see what my check amount is. I can easily see what I've entered for my earnings as well as what's coming out for deductions and I can also view how those um, tax calculations have been completed. So at this point in time is when I am going to be looking for errors. So if I notice I did some type of miskeying entry, reviewing my audit report is going to assist me in making those changes. Once you've generated your audit report, you now have the option to run all of the additional registers that are located under the main folder. They are not required to be generated in order for you to continue and print your checks. However, it's highly recommended that you do generate them just for backup purposes so you have a complete listing and it's also that final review of this payroll prior to it being printed and updated. So once I've gone through and I've generated all of those registers, I'm going to take a look at my pre-check register and I'm going to preview that pre-check register. 
Now again, pre-check register is very simple to my data entry audit report. It's going to give me the information regarding the check amount, what the gross earnings were. So again, it's another final check prior to me printing the checks before making any changes. If I did notice that something was incorrect, in fact, I'm not going to print my checks right now, so I'm going to say no. If I did notice that there was something incorrect on that check register, I can easily go back into payroll data entry and I can say OK to get back into my pay cycle. I can go to my list of employees that have information. I can go back into that record and now I can make those changes on my lines. So prior to any updating, I still have accessibility to the payroll data entry to make any changes. Now when I go into my check printing, after I've run my pre-check register, I can go into my check printing. Oh, because I accessed my payroll data entry a second time, even though I didn't make any changes, it is prompting me, make sure you run that calculation. So we're going to run our payroll tax calculation again because it wants to confirm that we did not make any changes during payroll data entry. So we'll run our payroll tax calculation. Once that is complete, because we know that we have not made any changes, I'm not going to print my audit report. I'll say no to that, but I am going to go into check printing. Now when we access check printing, it's going to ask you, well, what's the bank code that you want to be using for your payroll checks? What is the check date? Now you remember previously we entered the pay period ending date of May 10th. Now I'm going to define the check printing date to be May 15th. So again, this is the check date that's going to print on your checks. We want to make sure we're starting with our next check number. We also have an option here to print checks already printed. So if I print these checks and maybe I have a printer jam or my ink ran out, something failed in my check printing, I can always come back into my payroll check printing, check this box of checks already printed, and I will be allowed to reprint those checks. These default settings should already be predefined for you regarding what is my check form type. So form code A is currently being used, and in our example, it's just a stub check. So it has a very long stub and then a check at the bottom. You also, if it is a graphical form, can go into your forms button if you have access to crystal reports, and you can modify that form in more detail. You have a default stub line, so it's just letting us know that there'll be 13 stub lines that can be included on our stub. And you could actually select a range of employees or even a check entry number. So if this employee had two checks, maybe we only want entry number ones to print first, and then we're going to do another check run of entry number twos. So you have that option. But if you do select all of the defaults, you would easily be able to just print those checks. I'm going to run through the process of printing because if we preview, the system will let us preview a check, but it will not consider it as processed. So we do have to hit the print function, and we're just going to print that check. Now we want to wait until all of our checks have actually printed on the printer to make sure that everything looks good. It's letting us know what our last check number printed was, and we will say OK to that. And then we're going to, before we answer this question, we want to make sure that all of our checks have printed properly. Because now it's stating to remove your checks from the printer and replace with plain paper. So as long as all of my checks have printed fine and I don't have to remove that stock, I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Now based on all those checks printing, it's now asking me if I want to print a check register. Now, if I had any direct deposit entries, I would also have gotten prompted to print my direct deposit stubs, and all of my direct deposit stubs would have gone through that print process as well. So we're going to say, yes, we want to print a check register. Now, once again, be careful about your posting date. I had my check date as May 15th. I'm going to change my posting date to also be May 15th, because that's the day that we want to post these transactions. So I'm going to go ahead and preview my check register. And again, my check register looks exactly like my pre-check register. So again, it's another chance for me to double check all of my check amounts as well as all of my withholdings to make sure that they look good. Because again, we have not updated anything. 
The only thing that we have done so far is done the data entry and actually printed our checks. Once we've reviewed our check register, which is highly recommended that you do print that, it wants to know if we want to update. So as long as all of my checks have printed properly and I'm happy with all of the totals, I would say yes. If for some reason one of my checks was jammed in the printer, I would say no here, go back into check printing, tell it to print checks already printed, and select the check that I need to reprint. So now it's asking me if I want to update, and since I'm happy with that transaction, I will tell it to go ahead and update. So now it's clearing out my payroll data entry files, it's transferring that check information historically to all of the employees that were paid, which in our case was just one employee. And with all modules in mass, it also wants to know, do we want to print our daily transaction register? I'm going to say yes to print that and preview it. You would more than likely want to print your daily transaction registers, which gives you the summarized version of what is going to be posted to General Ledger. And we're going to update that register as well. So now if I go back into employee maintenance and I take a look at our employee that we paid and I look at our checks tab, I now can see the check that was processed for today's payroll.